Hey, I'm John. Welcome back to Mr. G's Workbench in part 10 of the FA-18A Warumai Hornet project. Uh, I apologize for the delay in getting out uh, this part of the, of the project. Uh, this was supposed to be like a simple one, two, three, build it up and get it out. And it's been anything but. So uh, today I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. Uh, the plane's starting out in primer today. Uh, we're going to go from primer to paint. From paint we're going to get into decaling the, the actual plane itself. Uh, there's only a couple other decals to be applied and I think those are going to be to the front gear doors. So I'll worry about that when we actually go to assemble that uh, in the next part. So today is just going to be focused on getting the, the plane itself painted and decaled. And uh, then the next part will be the remaining parts. The landing gear will get assembled and installed. We'll get the exhausts assembled and installed in the next part as well. So. Let's see if we can just kind of squeeze this one out for today and, uh, and get this plane done. So let's take a look at where we're at. So the last time we were together in part nine, uh, the plane was in raw plastic. Uh, while I was priming something unrelated to this, I figured I, I had my airbrush going, I had the, the uh, primer in the, in the jar, let me get it done. So I went ahead and I primed the uh, Hornet with the black version of Mr. Surfacer 1500. Uh, I've got everything done. The wheel bays were taped off. Uh, the front gear bay is uh, blocked up with foam. I've got foam in the intakes and foam in the exhausts. And I found that there was a, a significant gap over here. This is where that refueling door was. And uh, I'm really kind of glad it's not there, but I, I'm kind of torn. Am I really going to go through the trouble of re-engraving that door? Uh, I'm probably not going to do a good job of it. It's going to look like ass, to be quite honest, so I don't know. Uh, I filled the gap around the windscreen, and uh, I'm kind of prepared to just leave it at that and put this into, into paint. I'd like to finish it because I really feel like this was meant to be like a, a good, solid build that I was going to bang out and move on. And now it's it's kind of becoming a little tedious, and uh, I just like to get it done. Um, let me know in the comments if you really need to see me paint in the paint booth, because I, I see some people do it online, and other people kind of skip ahead. I know Matt over at Duke's Models typically just shows you the end result, unless there's something specific he wants to illustrate. So uh, I'd be curious to know where, where you guys fall on that spectrum. What do you want to see?
hopefully we're out of the paint booth for the final time and I'll give you a quick recap of what we've done here. As I stated at the beginning, we started out with the entire plane uh, primed with Mr. Surfacer Black 1500. After that was applied, we started on the bottom and we put on a marble coat of uh, testers, Monomaster 36495, they're light gray. I marbled it on the entire bottom of the plane and up the sides. Then I went back after I was done with that, put on several light misted coats until I had a, a fairly solid coat. And uh, when I was happy with that, I masked it off and I moved on to the top. The top is uh, AK Real Colors uh, 36375, they're light ghost gray. And same drill, marble coated it on. After it was done, I went back and made several light passes until I was satisfied with the coverage. And uh, after that was done, I masked off the, uh, the gray and I painted the tails and the spine with uh, Hataka Orange Line Dark Sea Blue, which is 15042. Got that on. And that, I love Hataka Orange paints. They spray like a dream, they cover great, and they, they set really well. Uh, again, with, with all the other paints I used, uh, I thinned them with uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner. Best thinner to use whenever possible. You can mix it with just about anything, and it always helps the paint to settle nice and flat. The only other thing I had to do was I went back. I have this... Uh, Ultimate Modeling Products, uh, fine sanding sponge. I mean, it's, I don't even know what light grit this is, but when, anywhere on the plane, when I feel a little bit of uh, a texture, I just take that, I rub it on until I, I get rid of that texture that is uh, kind of sandy, and then I wipe it down. So I'm extremely pleased with the results to this point. <clears throat> oh, sorry, and I'm almost forgetting. So up front, uh, this area here where the gun port is, I masked that off. That's painted with uh, Vallejo's uh, metal color steel. Uh, I, the gun metal, I have Vallejo gun metal. It's a little too shiny. That looked just right compared to the reference photos I have of this plane. And then the tip of the nose is, uh, it's MIG, it's ammo by MIG Middlestone, which is, 33531. It's uh, their product number is MIG 200. Uh, I, I wasn't too worried about getting this color exactly right. As long as it looks close, I'm happy with it. Uh, everything else looks good.
All the decals are on the fuselage and I am thoroughly underwhelmed by them uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, prior to applying the decals I had used, I was testing out uh, VMS uh, gloss varnish which is this stuff. Uh, it went on, I wasn't crazy about it, it didn't have a smooth uh, glossy finish. So I wound up, I stopped uh, midway with that, rubbed down the plane, and then I applied uh, AK Gauzy, which has been my go-to gloss coat uh, for weathering and decals. So after I applied that, it, it was a nice smooth uh, gloss coat. I polished it down with a, with a low uh, grit sanding stick to make sure everything was smooth and then I proceeded to apply the decals starting with these uh, large tail decals and you can see here if you hit, hit it in the light just right you can I still have silvering over here 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 around here uh, I had numerous uh, coats I, I used uh, a combination of my hair dryer and uh, salva set and kept poking out every hole I found, applying some more salva set, and then hitting it with a hair dryer again. Uh, I still wound up, I'm gonna go back and I'll hit these spots again. Uh, I had to go in, I, I can't tell you how many holes I've poked in, especially around this reinforcement plate here, around these uh, small squares at the bottom of the tail, and I still have raised areas. Uh, up here where I had uh, trim the decal like meh. I'm gonna wind up going back and just applying like a little more blue over the top of the fin Just to kind of square that away uh, Another issue I have here. That's kind of my fault because I had to trim these decals to fit the tail uh, I have a little bit of decal sticking out from the other side of that tail. I'll fix that but as far as uh, adhesion I had a lot of adhesion problems with these decals uh, and as, as I said, I had a lot of problems getting the set, uh, I, you know, not the first time I've applied decals on stuff. So, uh, like I said, I'm very underwhelmed by these decals. A again, along here, this is one long decal. Uh, I've got a ton of silvering under here that I've, I've addressed a lot of it. I can still see some over here. Uh, I, again, I, I, this is after repeated applications of Solvacet. These decals up here were like just um, obnoxious to apply. Uh, I had to slice them into pieces to kind of get it to fit. I have silvering along the edges of them here and some over here as well. Uh, uh, again, I had silvering on these gray decals here uh, around the uh, Air Force uh, National Insignia. I had, this is like three or four applications of Solvacet. Uh, the in for the sake of fairness the slime lights were from the decals that came with the kinetic kit uh, I mean they are after all uh, I think they were done by fighter town decals but I'm assuming they were printed by cartograph and I, I kind of still had some issues getting the slime lights to settle properly the other issue I had was on the darker grays on the upper surfaces you can see where the gray is just blended into the uh, the fuselage color. Uh, the no steps are from the no steps up here are from the kinetic decals, and the the lighter colored no steps back here that you can't really see very well, and the uh, instructions over here on each wing, those are from a generic F-18 uh, stencil set I had. Uh, I'm, I'm sure part of the problem is the AK Real Colors uh, paint that I used on the upper surfaces should be slightly darker. I think that's that's a big problem with this. That was uh, AK's Light Ghost Gray. I think it's slightly too light. And that's why it's hard to see all those uh, no steps and stuff and the numbers that came with the, with the, with the decals. And then the, the intake warnings went on. These actually settled down pretty well. I have no complaints. Uh, I'm just not really thrilled with the performance of the decals. This is where we're at. And uh, after I had applied all the decals, after I got them to set as best I could, 
Then I used, I actually had a good experience with the VMS uh, varnish, their satin finish. Because that's, that's what I used on this. The satin sat a lot better. It, it, it went down well and I had no issues with it. So I'm happy with that. The gloss, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use again. If you need a, an acrylic gloss coat, use the AK Gauzy. I, I, I would use that every time. So there you have it. We've got all the decals on, you know, for better or worse. Uh, I think there's only two companies that make the decals for the War of My Hornet. And, and that the, the company I used is one of them. Uh, would I use them again? If I could avoid it, I would avoid them. But, you know, for this particular project, I had to go with what there was. So uh, that being said, thanks for stopping in and uh, joining me on this project. Uh, Thank you to everybody who subscribed. We're up over 580 subscribers now. Thank you, each and every one of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you supporting me just by hitting the subscribe bell. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope that this convinced you to do so. Just uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll be notified every time I put out a new video. So until next time, we'll get together for part 11. We're going to get this plane completely assembled in the next part and we'll be done. All right. Thanks again for stopping in. Stay well. See you soon.